This lecture is about wavefronts, which is a very specific way that we represent the movement of waves. So a wavefront is the set of all locations in a medium where the wave is at the same phase. This could be where all the crests are, where all the troughs are, or any phase in between. Wavefronts are useful for showing how waves move in two dimensions. The length between two lines on a wavefront is exactly one wavelength. And that makes sense because they're where the same phase occurs. So any two places where the same phase occurs, the distance between those will be one wavelength. As an example, we could pretend that this wave is moving through water. And I'm trying my best to represent this wave in 2D. Like we're looking down at the water, like it's a pool or something like that. And we can see where the high points and low points of the water are. But this is a very inexact way of measuring those high points and low points. So instead, we're going to draw this as a wavefront. To draw this as a wavefront, I'm going to draw a line where all the crests of each wave appear. So those lines are an example of a wavefront, this very specific way of representing where waves are in a medium. And obviously the distance between two lines on a wavefront is one wavelength. So this is what the wavefront would look like by itself if you encountered it in a problem or a test. Just these lines and you know that at each point and you know that at each line that's where the same phase of the wave occurs, so the distance between those two lines is one wavelength. We could also draw the wavefronts where the troughs of the wave appear. And in that case this would still be the wavelength. Just shifted a little bit, but besides that it's the same wave. We could also draw them like this between the trough and the crest. And again, this is the same wavelength, just shifted a little bit. Wavefronts can come in different shapes depending on the movement of the wave. So the one I drew on the left could be waves moving from left to right or right to left. I just indicated that their velocity is to the right. The other picture shows waves moving outward in all directions. So the second example would be like if you dropped a stone into a pond and observed the waves moving out. Wavefronts can show where constructive and destructive interference of waves will occur. When two waves are perfectly in phase, they experience constructive interference. And when two waves are perfectly out of phase, they experience destructive interference. So as an example, I have a red and a blue wave, and, a, and above them I have an image of the wavefronts of the wave, just imagining that we're looking straight down at these waves as they move through a material. So when the lines of the wavefronts are exactly between each other, that's when destructive interference occurs. Because you can see that each trough of the blue wave is lining up with each crest of the red wave, which will cancel out the total wave and become zero altogether. So that's where perfectly destructive interference occurs, where the two wavefronts are in between each other. Constructive interference occurs when they perfectly line up because you can see here the crests are above other crests, the troughs are above other troughs. So if the lines of the wavefronts occupy the same place, that's where constructive interference occurs. This is going to matter a lot for understanding how waves expand and interact with other expanding waves. As an example, we could imagine that we drop two rocks into a pond at different points and two waves start to expand out in all directions from each. One I'll label as red and the other is blue. And you can see that as they expand out, they're going to start to interact with each other. And we're going to want to know where constructive and destructive interference occurs, where they're interacting. I'm going to put a green dot wherever constructive interference occurs, and that's basically going to be anywhere where we have two overlapping lines. Whenever two lines are in the same place, that means the same phase of the wave is in the same place. So this is all the places where constructive interference will occur between these two waves. Destructive interference will occur where the line of one wave is exactly in the middle of the lines of two other waves. So that'll be all these red positions right here. And you can see that this pattern is formed when we actually do oscillate two objects in water. It's, it's a little difficult to see what's happening in the middle of the two things he's oscillating in the water, but something like that pattern is going to occur. And as the waves spread out, you can see that there are certain places where there's constructive interference, which I've labeled in green, and destructive interference, which I've labeled with red. 
So one more time, you can see constructive interference where there are very large wave crests and destructive interference where there's nothing. And that's what you need to know about how to label wave fronts.